Hello, it's Sarah, and I am going to be working on inches and twinchies today. Twinchies, two inch by two inch, and inches are one inch by one inch little works of art. Well, <laughs> little pieces of art, right? Um, and you can do this a couple different ways. I am doing specifically today zentangle patterns. So I am going to, let me think, front, back, and then I'm going to do four, one, two, three, four, yeah. Um, so I'm going to cut my inches before I make them because I'm just going to work on the inchy itself. But if you wanted to, like the, the next time I make one of these, I'm going to do a mixed media piece. And so I'm going to just take a piece of mixed media paper and do the whole thing and make a background and everything and then cut it into pieces and use that as my inches. But for today, I am going to create each piece individually and I'm basing these designs off of designs that I've already done just to make it simple. Uh, oh, it's a little small. Let's see. It's a little small. Let me see, I'll put that one in the middle. I'm gonna make an inchy book with to, to do this. So I've got my previous videos shared. Inchy books are just something, I, I saw it, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it was a Facebook post that I saw and it was something from Somerset Studios and I just uh, screenshot it and I do believe I have the name. I'll look, my phone isn't here, I'll look for it in a minute um, of the artist, but there's so, like I actually wanna make another one using all of my like lace and make it shabby chic. Anyway, you can go anywhere with this. So I've shared in previous videos, this was a watercolor uh, little book that I did based on um, the art journal page I did. This is using a stamp set and I embossed the design and then watercolored it. Uh, similar to this, same thing, it's a stamp set. Um, this one was just uh, jelly prints and then I cut the jelly plate prints into inchy size and I did the tutorial on this one. I used um, chipboard for the covers which I do like that but I think for this one I'm gonna, I don't know, don't hold me to it because you can always glue this down to a piece of chipboard um, to create covers, but I think I'm just going to do it similar to this where it's just three pieces of this um, Weight of paper is definitely strong enough that you don't need to back it with uh, The chipboard so I think right now that's my thought anyway So this is going to be the cover going to open it up and there'll be an inchy on the back of that an inchy there flip it over inchy inchy and then this basically I've only just signed it on the back so I, I may put a little border on it and sign it but nothing major um, so this is what I'm going for and then I grabbed some of my ATC's now an ATC is a similar little work of art that can be anything you want it to be artist trading cards they're called and they're two and a half by three and a half inches and so you can trade these like baseball cards you know but I'm going to try and do little inches so the cover I think I'm gonna do like this guy uh, wherever he is here him so I think I'm gonna do a smaller version of this on the cover and then for my inches and then I'll just do a background on here uh, maybe just stripes or something, some type of pattern like this. We'll see. I want it. I want the inchy to stand out, so I'm not sure what I'll do. Um, but these inchies will all have a different zentangle or zia string pattern. Zia meaning zentangle inspired art, and that's if, it, like, say I were to put a heart and then zentangle the heart, or I have a sailboat here. I'm gonna, I could do a word, a flower, um, anything. I have words here, but I have done um, flowers. That's on, actually on here. 
So I did these flowers. Uh, here's a big heart. So these are considered Zia, meaning Zentangle inspired art. Um, you can color them or leave them black and white. These are more like Zentangles, um, Zendoodles. I'm not sure. Uh, all right. So the first thing we're going to do, and since I've done this with you guys before, if you look back in my videos, you'll see um, I did do this tutorial for this where where home is where the heart is, sorry, uh, Zentangled Zia String type ATC. But, so I'll do that off camera. But for my little, um, I gotta go down here, it's very small, for my inches, I'm just going to do, uh, let's see, and this pen has been leaking, but this is my Micron 01 by Pigma, by Sakura, I'm sorry, my Pigma Microns. You could use a Sharpie. I would suggest using a permanent pen. I would even use my um, Uniball, my Uniball Vision, something waterproof. So I'm going to put my paper cutter away. And I'm going to frame each of these. I want to give each of them a frame. So just do your best to, and because this paper is, uh, is this mixed media? I think I used watercolor for these because I think, I think I might watercolor. Definitely the, um, the cover. I'm going to add some color to the cover. But that's all you want to do. I'm just going to make a frame. And some of these I haven't framed. Well, very few. The words I haven't framed. Um, so, and then this was the, the framed version. And then here's the not framed version. So basically, you can take the design out to the edge, right? So I'm going to attempt to make that a little smaller. And I'm just going to go for it. So we're going to put, am I in the shot? I'm gonna, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm doing a heart, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but I'm gonna fill, and it's hard to work on this little tiny one by one. But I wanted to fill the area with the heart. And then I'm also going to make some strings, Zia strings, right? inside the heart and zentangle each one of those and then I'm going to zentangle on the outside so this this will be and it's almost kind of reminding me of a stained glass piece but each one of those will be a different design as well and on this one I used colored which I kind of like that idea I happen to have these which are not the Pigma pens these are our Statler and these you can get at Target, but they're very fine point. And I think I'm going to use these. I don't know. It says dry safe. I don't know what that means. Let's see. Uh, super fine, metal clad tip, water based, assorted ink colors. So I wouldn't suggest. What does dry safe can be left uncapped? Okay, so the pen can be left uncapped. I think my husband's just coming home, so my dog. But um, I think I want to do that. I was just going to make it all black and white, but I think I want to do it. I'm going to use these guys. So I'm going to use pink, green, red, and orange. I like those colors. Maybe this blue. Hey, Joe, I'm making a video. I'll be right there. So let's go ahead and do a little piece of this with spirals. But see how fine this point is? Perfect for untangling in something this small. Uh, what else did I want to do? I want to do something like this. And so I'm just going to make squares and then inside each square I'm going to make a little design. So let's see. Um, 
let's do it facing this way. Do I want to do it on... every... That's just a simple little design, but I think I want to add lines to it too. So I'm going to go like make little sunshines inside, maybe every other, just to see what it looks like. But I like that I'm using color. I don't know. I kind of like it. Okay, then the green, I'm just going to put, I'm going to go, hopefully I'm in the shot because I get so focused on what I'm doing, I forget to look up and see where my shot is. This is very, um, I always call it uh, like meditative. I don't know if that's the right word. But I'm going to put a little, kind of similar to that I guess. I like to call it a little teardrop in the middle of each of these little areas. Yeah, these pens. And see, this is the thing, guys. I have all these supplies, and I never use them. So that's why I'm trying to use them. I'm going to do more circles. I love the circles pattern. It looks like bubbles, and you just keep making them until you fill the entire space. So there's some big, some little. And that's it. Did I mess it up? Oh, no. It was a fluff. And then you know what? I'll use the black on the outside. So let's see. Oh, did I just flick? No. I'm going to do just a check pattern over here. Check's easy. I could just leave it stripes. But I like checks. And I can either fill in the checks or not. Um, filling in really looks cute. I think I'm going to do just a swirly pattern like this. Try and follow. Oh, I already messed it up. But it's, you know, they're my inches. It's all right. Swirly. Um, let's do... My go-to little... Um, how about just lines, and then, um, it's hard when it's this size, right? I'll do lines this way. Good enough. And I probably would, let's say, I think I like the idea of I mean, a Zentangle pattern. I have books that show Zentangle patterns, so if you can't, but it's basically just doodling. Anything that you can um, think of, basically, that is a re repetitive pattern or, um, like, I don't know, but see, I just made little X's in there. So that's an inchy. I like it. So that's an inchy. I'm going to make, um, now see, I have to figure something out for my background. And maybe I could use a stamp or something. I'll have to figure that out because what I'm, what I see how I did it on this, I made it pink and black, right? So really you just want a base that you can put your Zentangle on. Actually, I framed the Zentangle on a piece of black and white, um, oop, sorry, spotted paper. And then, you know, I just used a theme to keep it all pink and black. 
So maybe I'll do that. I think that looks super cute actually. So I'll be back. Um, I'll do a few more inches and then uh, I'll show you how I put it all together. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I am moving along here. I'm not sure what to do now though. I'm a little stumped. I'm just cutting some more two by two pieces because I need my inside pages, but wait till you see what I did. I got a little carried away. And you know, some people are loving the, the idea for, for inchy books. Um, I read some of my comments from my other video and um, one said, they're cute, but what do you do with them? Listen guys, I don't know what you do with them. My whole craft room is filled with stuff that basically I've just enjoyed making. That's the thing. That saying, enjoy the journey, right? It's true. Just have fun in the moment and worry about what you're going to do with it after. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't for the fun of it, we wouldn't do it at all. So I guess what, what could we do with it? All right. Um, I think trading them is super fun, but I'm going to collect them. I'm probably going to stick them in my little sleeves. And when I say that, let's see if I have, I don't even know if I have room in these books. They're so stuffed. See, these are my, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know I'm way off point here, but hold on, hold on. I just want to show you. So see, these are actually some, um, these are pocket letters that I've gotten. And this is the sleeves that I'm talking about. So I'm just going to collect the, them. These are actually ATCs. Actually, pocket letters are filled with ATCs. Every single thing in here is an ATC because it's every single thing is a, a little work of art. But I do think these are all ATCs. This is because I collect them. So what do you do with them after? Well, you just put them in a book like this and then you can go back and look at them and get inspired and just remember, I mean, I don't know. What do we do with anything, right? What do you do with, uh, you know, most of the stuff we have, you're not taking it along everywhere you go. It's got to be somewhere. Anyway, all right, but that was just, you know, I stuff like that just sticks with me sometimes. I just think they're so fun. So anyway, look what I made. So I got a little crazy. I have, sorry about the glare. This, I have to keep my mat down because I'm a messy crafter. So I did go with the house theme. Well, let me go in a little more. Hold on. <clears throat> I went with the house theme and recreated that um, ATC that I made that I entangled. And I colored this time with, see I'm I'm trying, Listen, I'm using things that I don't use all the time. That's what gets me happy. So I have, I did some with these. Remember, I showed you these, Statler, and then I used these. These are the Ink Tents, Derwent Ink Tents watercolor pencils, and they're so yummy. So I colored, so this one, I just gently, and I'll do, maybe I'll do one with you. I, I, I'm sorry I didn't. I just feel like, sometimes I feel like I'm repeating myself so much. Um, and I'm trying to make my videos a little shorter because I do talk a lot. And I know you guys don't mind. But look at these. I made these inchies. Aren't they so cute? I mean, this one's kind of the most simple. Just a big, couple big houses, more close-up version, right? These are in the distance. And this one's a more close-up version. So there's four for this one. And then there's this one. This one's the more um, Zia strings kind of thing where it's just shapes. Oops. So here I did I did the sailboat. And what, what happened was, and I was using the Sakura Micron pen. And this is permanent ink. But I did go over this with my Wink Estella. Um, just the clear glitter pen and it kind of smudged you can see the white isn't as oh excuse me <laughs> the white but I went over the yellow with the Wink Estella see how there's just a little shimmer but on the water because I didn't think it 
it was separated enough, the water I put stickles. So that is definitely shining. And what did I put stickles on on these? Anything? Look at my owl. Come on. He's so cute. And like I didn't entangle the whole owl. I just entangled a few parts of him and around him. I did love um, a heart and a flower. So very simple. They didn't take long. Uh, did I put stickles on? I just put stickles on the heart on here. And I put Wink Estella on the cloud. But you can go crazy. Like I have all types of dimensional paints and things like that. That's the thing. The next video I'm going to do is going to be a mixed media piece. So I'm going to, um, I have, so anyway, let's see. What can, I'm going to come back up so I don't, there we go. That's, that's good. So I have these. So basically, this would be the cover. I put an ATC here. I'm sorry, I keep saying ATC. I saw that in my other video too. Inchy, then this page, put an inchy. Then you flip it over, inchy, and then back cover, inchy. So I have to figure out what I'm going to use for my background. So that's a book right there. And then this is going to be very similar. So that, I'm going to put love. And then we'll put the little owl because he's so cute. And then the heart and the flower. So I have two more little inchy books. Now, I think I'm going to just quickly go through my stash of, um, maybe I'll grab my little, I have like the six by six inch uh, craft paper and see if I have just a black and white polka dot. I think I might. I had this. Remember, so there's this black, something that'll just play with it, or maybe not even black and white, maybe white with black dots. That would be even better. So I'll be right back and see if I have that. All right, you guys, this one is my favorite so far. My camera's a little wonky. Look, I finished this one. So I ended up, well, I trimmed, I used the black and white polka dot, well, white with black polka dots, and I put a line around the, oh, let's go in a little, sorry. I put a line around the frame on the outside, and then I, after the glue is dry, I put a line around the actual inchy, and I just think it's adorable. And then on the back, I just did a Zentangle. It is so cool, and I mean, I didn't color this one, but I could. I think I might add just a little color somewhere just to just to add it in because it to make it all consistent so let me show you how I did that now I ended up finding this um, white with black polka dots but I had scraps so I've cut apart what I had and I'm not gonna have enough in the two by two size so I'm gonna fill it so I'm gonna show you how I did that so here's my cover I already did my cover I just glued a piece of this to um, watercolor paper. I think it's either watercolor or mixed media paper. I forget now. Um, and then I just glued my inchy on the front. I put my frame around that and I think my glue is dry. And you just frame it in. So that's page one. Now for page two, I did end up, and I was thinking you could just glue these back to back, or if you have double-sided paper, it would be great, And the, but then it might just be a little thin. So I did put a piece of either mixed media, which this is a nice, it's like, a, it's like um, cardstock, a nice cardstock, so it's going to make it a little more um, stiff. So you just want to, and I love Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. It is my go-to, but you could do this actually with um, or ATG gun or whatever your favorite adhesive is. Ouch. Oh, I like to use my little tweezers to get everything lined up. So you kind of find the edge and there's not much wiggle room. You kind of want it in the right place, but you have a little wiggle room. All right, good. 
And I'm not even pressing that down. I'm going to put this one on first and then we'll give it a good press. And we're going to disentangle the back because um, I like finishing it off like that. Now I'm giving it a good press. Just press out any excess glue that comes out of the edges. And we can adhere. I'm going to go love heart. So let's put our heart on there. Actually, yeah, we can. Uh, actually, yeah. <laughs> it's not that big a deal, like making the, um, the frame around it, because this is flat on the front, but this is going to have a bump. Well, we'll do it, actually. I'll show you. So center it. And I'm just pressing down with a napkin so that it kind of picks up the glue. I just don't want to get glue all over my fingers because then I rub it everywhere. All right. So what I mean is when you put the other inchy on here, it's going to leave, it's going to be bumpy like a little bit. So let's see. I think I want to put my flower on this side. Make sure it's going the right way. Well, the, actually, the flower doesn't have a top or a bottom, so you're good. Let that dry for a sec, and we'll come back to it. So that's page two. Now for page three, this is the either, I think this is mixed media paper, and I'm going to put this on this side of it, because it's the inside, and we're going to untangle the back. But because, see, I, I am using scraps, so let's put this on. First, and really get this on there straight. Uh, yeah, yes, I want it this way. There we go. Give it a press. Then this is going to go here, and I'll cut it when I. Uh, well, let's put the glue on the. I'll cut it. Um, I'll cut the excess off when it's dry. So I'm just pushing it up against the other piece, and it's not um, perfect, but no one will know. And take your scissors and just cut up against, oops, and there you go. So first let's entangle before we glue our owl. He is so cute. Oh my gosh. So I'm just going to use my Uniball Vision Fine. I love this pen, you guys. I think I want to order a bunch on Amazon so I always have them because they're fantastic for mixed media. But I did my original Zentangles with the Micron. So all these little Zentangles I did do with the Micron. But for this, we're going to make a frame. And you can use a ruler if you're not good at making straight lines, but I'm pretty good at it. I can eyeball it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a handmade piece of art and it's for you. Um, then I'm just going to make some Zia strings they call it so you just start off by making like let's make one go this way and one go that way. You could even do another one but I'm just going to keep it simple and then I'm just going to do let's just make lines across this one and we'll figure out our pattern in a second. Um, anything that I want to do, <laughs> I have a hard time thinking of things. All right, um, we could just keep it really simple. Let's do swirls in this one. I do love the swirl. And if you kind of start in the middle, it can get really big. 
really big and then you fill in in the other spaces I think it looks cool that way so right here we could put a tiny one we'll have two more so that makes it go faster too and that's a Zentangle uh, what else should we do let's do a curved line it ends up not being as curvy the smaller you get and over here something else round mm, circles just circles I love my circle so watch you do circles make a big one over here so you just start out putting circles everywhere and then you're gonna fill in and that's the cool part well it's all cool and let's see I'm gonna fill in right here but look then you have to fill these little spots so you can make them touch like this it kind of dictates the size you're gonna do once you've established see so like now you have it looks like bubbles or I don't know be careful because this ink does stay a little wetter than the um, Sakura ink would but this is one of my faves I like this uh, bubble pattern kind of put it on all my entangles if it ain't broke don't fix it I feel like I do it fairly decent turns out nice Um, so you get the picture and it's entangled pattern is anything that you can repeat so in these I can just make boxes basically let's just make boxes and keep this one simple and maybe we'll fill in the boxes oops I like to keep them uniform didn't go so well let's just do will fill in with lines instead of making it solid be careful because it's easy to go in the wrong box by accident and your pattern would be off that would be annoying but see my lines aren't perfect but it still looks good and then over here what should I do what should I do Ooh, we could do um, I really like like um, sorry I'm looking up at um, my box to see to give me some ideas because I've already made those uh, I think I'm going to do in every other one and we could do a different pattern in the other ones because anything goes and then in this one maybe I'll just put let's just do a wiggle and a dot on each side of the wiggle and then on these you can finish off your triangle with a little triangle on the bottom
And I think I'm going to add some lines. I could just put, I think I'm gonna put a triangle on top too. I was gonna put lines across like that, but I haven't done this lately. And we're done. OMG, so cute. See, that didn't take long. All right, so that's my back cover. This is the inside. And I still have to glue my little bird, my little owl. Hopefully, I'm not running out of battery. Hopefully, I was in the shot, too, because I was not paying attention to that. Oh, boy. Seems like I would have been. You got to make sure. So this is the page that we kind of connected. So I don't know. Do I like that? That? Does it really matter? No. I'm going to do it like this. So I'm just centering. And giving a press. And... Still got to put a frame around these, so this is all dry. So this is just the finishing, like, display look that you're going for, right? Or the, you know, but you could leave it plain. You could use different designer paper. It's just that I wanted the inches to be the star of the show, so you kind of want to think about that when you're designing. Um, you didn't want to put something that would clash and really make the inchy blend into the background. You want it to stand out, right? So that's the thing about if you're going to put it in this type of a... Because you know what I've seen? Inchy books with just inches. So I would use like tiny little, well, I have them, some are these, like the regular size, these guys, maybe even smaller, and make an inchy book just with the inchies, without a twinchy is what I'm saying. So did I do everything? So that's two, just this one. And I still have more ideas for these. I'm going to do some shabby chic ones. And I want to do a mixed media one. So I'm not done with these. I'm having fun. That's what counts. What am I going to do with them? I don't know. Now, when I punch my holes and I'm using my crocodile, I use the small side, which I think it's like seven, seven eighths or something like that or one eighth, I'm not sure, but it's the smaller hole punch side. And then I just eyeball it. So I'm gonna go in the middle, right around, just inside my, my frame line. So right on the frame line, I'm gonna make a hole in the center. And I mean, you could mark it for sure, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. See, I have my little because I like to be able to see through the hole for some reason. Well, when I do the other holes. Now, you can do this. Am I in the shot? You can do this in the middle of this hole and the end. Or I like to go about a quarter inch in from the end. So that's what I'm going to do. So a quarter inch in from each end approximately and I just eyeball it like I said so then to make sure everything lines up because I could have punched all three in one go but because there's inches in there it makes it a little wonky and I just wanted to do it in the most so we didn't have a mess up you know so I'm gonna make I'm just lining the one I already punched up with the ones below it and making a little hole or a little um, circle where the hole is. 
and that will be my guide to punch these. And so you can actually see that little hole I just drew right through the hole in the crocodile if you punch out that little piece of cardboard. Ugh. It's not falling out. And then the last thing we're going to do is add our jump rings and we are done. But I did want to maybe add some color. I'm just going to add color. On one of them I'll probably add the color with those little markers, but I'm not sure. Um, and then the other one I'm going to do it with my ink tense pencils. Just because that's what I used on the inchies. So I have, this is the middle. Yeah, and this is the f cover. And on this one, I used the chunkier jump rings. I just got these, and then this one was the one I had. So I want to see what these look like, the less chunky. So let's do them. So I have my little, you need kind of two, um, what are these called? Pliers. These are needle nose pliers, and these are just flat pliers. And you open jump rings by twisting and I'm going to do the center one first. Just go in all three and then you twist back. Kind of twist it into place. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. It's not too small. It's, it's fine. It's only three pages. But you twist. Twist it back. And one more. So I hope you like these, you guys. Honestly, I don't know what you're going to do with them, but they're fun to make, and they don't take up a lot of room, so who cares, right? You could throw them in a drawer, throw them in a box, and come back and look at them sometime, and, you know, you can make a little key ring out of it. I don't know. So here they are. See, here's the little bit more. I liked this coloring on this one because the house, I don't know, the, the roof was kind of grayer. And I just love the polka dots. So yeah, I think I am going to add a little bit of color. Just a little bit. I don't know how. And then this one with the sailboat. And love and heart. Look at my little owl. He's so cute. All right, you guys. I'm going to be back with a couple more inchy books, I think. Like I said, I want to do that mixed media one, which I think they're the most easy to do because we're just going to use one piece of paper to make the whole thing. All right? Thanks for watching.